Hi, I'm Sam Jacob and I'm really happy to be sharing with you some of the uh, design work and uh, thoughts that we've had uh, in working uh, on our project for Exhibit Columbus and specifically for the site that we've been given, which is um, uh, Washington Street. Um, I wanted to explain, first of all, a little bit about how we've approached it and like many of the ways in which we try to think about uh, how we design, it's related to context, but in a very wide sense. So it's a project which attempts to respond to Columbus as a place, uh, as a site, as a history, but also as a kind of fiction or a story. Um, and I suppose in one way of thinking about it, I always think about the way in which the, the stories that we tell are bound up with the things that we design, the worlds that we make. And somehow being able to unravel or retell those stories can unlock new ways of thinking about place, new ways of thinking about the role of architecture in design. Um, the kind of, I suppose the key starting point is an idea of how architecture and design produce better worlds. And that certainly responds to or recognizes uh, all of the achievements that, that have happened in those fields in Columbus, driven by J. Irwin Miller's um, belief in the ability of architecture and design to improve the life of uh, the city's citizens. Um, it's, it's specific to Columbus for sure, um, but it's also part of a, a, a kind of broader modernist idea and recalls the sort of utopias which earlier European modernist designers um, imagined but perhaps it also recognizes and responds to other stories about utopias which are bound up with the early European settlements in in America um, but I suppose it's also a project which tries to examine what utopia uh, kind of means or, or, or the more complex notions around utopia. The novel that Thomas More published in the 16th century that coined the phrase utopia, um, a phrase which means both no place and a uh, good place, um, which already sets up a kind of irony, at least in More's own vision of his, of, of his work. Um, uh, was styled as a, a travelogue. Um, it's a story as told by a passenger on an early uh, European voyage to what they imagined was the, the new world. Um, and it's a story told by its protagonist of an island um, off the coast of the Americas uh, where he encountered uh, a, a country um, full of uh, alternative ways of organizing society. Um, but looking at it from, from today's point of view, we could also say that, that for all of the, 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 the utopian ideas which the novel suggests, which are almost kind of proto-socialist, verging on a kind of royalist communism, um, it, it's also intertwined with that history of European expansionism, that history of, of colonialism. And perhaps that suggests that the question of utopia is more complex than we often, uh, we often imagine. For example, in order for a utopia to exist, does it have to erase what has come before? Is there violence uh, and oppression and appropriation uh, bound up with all of the kind of ambitions for, for, for better worlds? Um, let me share my screen and I'll begin to show you some of the, the, the work that we've been doing. When um, Moore introduces us to the imaginary world of utopia, he does it through things which look quite real. He does it with a map uh, on the left and uh, an alphabet on the right. Um, uh, it's interesting that these visual cues, these sort of like designed elements in a way, are part of the, the fiction. Um, and I'm interested in like how those things work in, in general, how fiction and, and, and reality are combined in the, the, the attitude of design. But I'm also interested in projecting it into Columbus itself. 
like what would happen if we translated Columbus into utopian script. Perhaps that would be a way to understand some of the ideas which are bound up in the physicality and the, the, the project of Columbus, um, you know, as embodied by J. Irwin Miller's sort of uh, uh, ideals, but also setting it in the context of uh, 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 other ideas of the American project, which are to do with uh, um, making better societies. Here's a, one example of Robert Owen's vision for, for New Harmony. Um, but even in the, 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 the embodiment in, in Columbus is that utopia is part of the every day, that it's part of the, the way in which you head to the library, you come across a Henry Moore, or the fire station um, becomes a, a kind of civic monument itself. These are important um, things and important aspects of imagining how design exerts itself on the world. In Washington Street, here's the uh, uh, celebrated st storefront improvement project, which tried to clean up the uh, vernacular signage with something which was more um, perhaps controlled. Um, but these ideas of communication in the city, communication in Washington, Washington Street, I think are fundamental to how I've approached it. Here we can think of like three orders of communication. One is text itself, text as, uh, as an alphabet, um, technologies of communication, so the kind of vernacular neon roadside, and then a kind of designed version of that. What would happen if those forms of communication began to take on other narratives, other symbols? Would that be able to tell us more than just what we should eat or um, uh, what we should wear. Could they begin to articulate longer term or more wide ranging civic narratives? Could there even be connections between things which we would never have thought uh, would be related to each other? Is there something perhaps about the relationship of the, the, the physical structure of the, the sailing ship and the, the, uh, the, the analysis that Robert Venturi and Denise Scott Brown did of the the uh, roadside signage in, in Las Vegas. Are these somehow related? Could we relate older traditions of civic communication, uh, such as weather vanes, with more uh, uh, vernacular forms of American uh, uh, roadside um, communication? And what would happen if those forms of communication began to, to merge? So here, thinking of the tradition of quilts, especially in, in American vernacular traditions, what would happen if they began to merge with the kinds of statements which Thomas More was making in the 16th century? Statements which actually feel very relevant to today's world, um, if not a little bit like motivational posters, but, but surely sentiments which on the whole are, are important foundations for, for civic um, life. And perhaps also the kinds of sentiments which which drive um, Columbus's own project. More reminds us that this is something which never ends and is something which, which, which we must always strive to continue. So perhaps that's also, you know, uh, maybe a, a response to the title of the New Middles, that we're not, that we're in the middle of a narrative, we're not at the end of a narrative. Um, and that middle means that the, the future is yet to be determined. Um, how those might be manifested in Washington Street? Well, begin to imagine quilts uh, hung and the absences, the, the no places, the alleyways of Washington Street with the phrases from Moore's Utopia. Or responding to the idea that Moore talks of in Utopia, that gold is used for, for chamber pots here uh, outside 301 Washington Street, um, the trash can uh, is treated with uh, a gold leaf finish, um, suggesting that, that the trash and the care of trash is one of the foundations and one of the most valuable ways in which society can, can really care for itself. Other forms of iconography from, from the maps of Utopia might begin to emerge in Washington Street as benches. But other forms of symbolism too. Here's four categories, one from uh, Moore's Utopia, another from the history of land surveying, another the language of seafaring, and uh, 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 on the last row, kind of symbols of, of, of Columbus. 
these might be combined into new civic languages um, themselves taking on forms which are somehow between let's say roadside signs and um, uh, weather vanes which could be attached to, to buildings should uh, permissions allow or they could become autonomous freestanding elements um, which begin to I guess articulate multiple and simultaneous narratives of of Columbus's past America's past Europe, Europe's past but also how those combinations might be rethought to create new kinds of future it's about making connections for sure and it's about multiple narratives and about the overlaying of these many references um, and that can include many things. Here's Rob, Robert Indiana's famous uh, artwork uh, uh, that says love. Um, Robert Indiana, of course, has a connection to Columbus and, and a, a painting of his hangs in City Hall. But here it is uh, translated into utopian script. And then here it is reimagined as a sale, um, uh, as part of a, what Denise Scott Brown calls a high reader, um, uh, part pavilion, part sign and part uh, kind of civic uh, device. So it's through these sorts of elements and through this kind of language which um, uh, the project seeks to work. Um, it, it aims to make present how histories of place are interconnected and it aims to acknowledge how central narratives are to the ways in which we design. Um, and it, I suppose, uses design explicitly to excavate and propose new narratives. And in doing that, um, hopefully begins to suggest how we might be able to shape and imagine the future in different ways. Thank you very much.